Hello, you're watching Transbrations. I'm Nishan Dion. Tonight's guest is Cortland Coco Bridges, a Pasadena native. She is an author, founder, and advocate. Despite the heartbreak of losing her daughter Kai in December of 2020, Cortland founded the Kai Alicia Thomas Foundation, dedicated to supporting families affected by gun violence. With an unwavering commitment to ending gun violence in black and brown communities, she remains a strong advocate. Cortland draws strength from her faith, family, and friends, finding solace in their support during her healing journey. Her life revolves around being a mother to Kai Thomas and Cameron Saltis and Anana to Kylie and King, the cherished grandchildren of her late daughter Kai. Cortland draws strength from her unwavering faith, close-knit family, and supportive friends, finding solace in the power of forgiveness. Hello, Cortland. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, I, I don't quite know how to explain all of this where we're going tonight, but we're here and I want to thank you for making time for me. I know you just had a big day yesterday, so thank you for making time with me this on this 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 Sunday evening. And thank you for having me. And um, again, thank you. Okay. What would you is Mama Bear, right? Would you is it Mama Bear? You said Mama Bear, right? I don't forget nothing. That's one reason my mama don't like me. So you know what? <laughs> Cortland. <laughs> Cortland, could you um could Cortland, could you share with us about your daughter, who your daughter Kai Alicia Thomas was? Kai, uh, she was first and foremost, she was my firstborn. She was amazing um, she had a heart of gold she was a mother she was a daughter she was a granddaughter she was a sister um, she was her smile her smile lit up a room anybody who knew her would tell you her smile if you've seen pictures and i'm sure you've seen pictures kai's smile her smile and her smile, um, her smile said it all. Even when she was going through, you never knew because of her smile. Um, she just, if I could describe her in one word, it would be amazing. Despite uh, the adversities she faced, Kai still managed to want to help and save the world. Mm -hmm. And that's who Kai was. She was a giver. She loved her daughter unconditionally. She loved her sister. She loved her family. Kai was about family. All Kai wanted was for family to just be on one accord. And she didn't mind helping people. I'll never forget. And I laugh now because her daughter's like that. Kai always, and me and my ex-husband, we laugh to this day. That girl was in the third grade and I laugh. This girl came home and brought a whole family home. From school? Yes, from school, a mother and three kids. What, but... They fought, why did they follow her to your home? They didn't have nowhere to live. Oh, the mother listened to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's so crazy mm. because just now, just, and I just, something just when I was talking to you, when you said describe her, describe Kai. But going back to that without, because, you haven't gotten your book yet, and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna mail it to you tomorrow, right. but I'm gonna give you a little, a little sneak peek into one of the chapters. Great, great. Kai, my cousin was working for Amazon, and there was this young man who was trying to put his life back together. My cousin told Kai, "You got to remember, Kai." thought she could save the world. She didn't know this young man from 
the man on the corner. She, all she knew is that he was trying to get his life back on track. He was living in his car. My cousin told her just in general conversation. She said he could come park in my garage, stay in my garage. He can come in my house during the day and shower and get ready for work. And I would feed him. Yep. Hmm. Kai wanted him to go to work and smell like a human being. She wanted him to be able to eat. Hmm. Not thinking about her own safety or anything. She always put others before herself. And just in that instance right now, when you ask me to describe her, I realized about the lady and her children. And I'm like, Kai was doing that as a little kid. Kai was always wanting to bring people home. <laughs> and I'm like, this girl and my granddaughter, she's always trying to help people. She would go to school and my aunt stayed with my daughter, Kai, to help with Kylie. Well, Kylie was maybe in kindergarten, first grade. And I remember my aunt always tells this story too. A little boy didn't have enough to eat. And Kai's daughter would always want to take extra snacks and sandwiches because the little boy didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, I guess, passed down. Mm -hmm. So that's who, yeah, that's who Kai was. Um, I think that's a great always, way to start. Yeah, that's a great way one to help and what, give back. What chapter? What chapter is that in? I'm not gonna tell you. Oh, okay. You know, I will, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna let you read it. Okay. Okay. I'm and the title of the book is. Oh, joy always gets the last laugh. Joy always gets. I'm the about last to laugh. say. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to wait till you get your book. You thought I was asking you again, be a trick, be a slick, right? Uh, and I'm known to be slick. So. <clears throat> but yes, Joy always gets the last laugh. And it's, you know, Kai, she just, she always had a way of like, I could be mad at her. And Kai would just call like nothing happened because she always just believed like, no, mm -mm. nope, I, you got to just make it right, you know, and that was, you know, that was her, you know, despite, you know, whatever was going on and I, I guess Kai knew tomorrow wasn't promised. And um, she knew. It was her relationship with God. And I really want to honestly say that she was, she was preparing all of us. You know, it was something that, you know, God had been instilling in her for a long time. And, you know, they say, you know, not the hour nor the day. We don't, but it was little things that God was, you know, allowing her to prepare us for. And that's why I think that Kai, a lot of the things she did with our family, as far as trying to make sure we all stay connected and did everything together and, and tried to keep us all together is because she wanted us to love each other and know that you got to stay together no matter what. And she always had this thing and she would always tell us, I got this, I got this. And so we all laugh and, you know, when times, you know, get challenging, we always be like, okay, I got this in our Kai voice. Because Kai would always say, I got this. She would always tell that to my parents. She'd be like, 
Nene, I got this. That's what she calls my mom. And then my dad, she'd be like, Pop Pop. Well, she called him Two Pop because it was only two grandchildren. It was her and my nephew. It was only two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And she was the oldest and my nephew who she was killed on his 25th birthday. And so December 1st was my nephew nephew's 25th birthday. Mm -hmm. And so um, they were the, she was the oldest girl. He was the old, he's the oldest boy. And so she would always say, I got this to pop. Okay. And so um, that's what we, you know, when things it's just, you know, and that's Kai, she just, I got this. And so we try to just, you know, think of things that, you know, she left us words, you know, you know, I got this. And her favorite word was literally. Literally. Okay. Everything was literally. And it's like, I'm literally over this, you know? So Kai just, her smile was so infectious and just always wanting to just help everybody. Like she would let her friends come stay with her um, when she had her own place. You know, she had purchased, bought cars, and every, every time her cars would get wrecked, it was due to her letting somebody else use her cars, and she would be left without cars. So then Mama Bear couldn't see her child being without a car, so then I would go get her a car. And, you know, because I'm like, no, my kid's not going to be walking with my grandchild or depending on nobody. Mm -hmm. So Kai just wants to help everybody. She always wants to see everybody win. And that uh, was Kai. And that was Kai. Portland, when was the last time that you saw Kai? My grandson, she had brought him to me. So November, 20, right before Thanksgiving, um, I kept my grandson and he was a couple of, he was a couple of days this would older, be King. maybe two King. weeks. King, right? Uh, yes, King. King. So he was a couple of weeks old, um, maybe like two weeks or somewhere in there. So, um, Maybe like November 20th, somewhere around there was the last time I've seen her. Maybe 23rd, or between the 20th and the 21st was the last time I've seen her. Somewhere around there. And how was she doing? She was, she was good. She mm -hmm. was, she was good. She always managed to put on a facade. I'll say that. I'll just say that. And, and you'll understand why when you read the book. Just put it like that. Great. And how was the pregnancy? Was everything, was there any complications? Was King okay? Was Everything was fine with his delivery? Kai had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, so she had a defibrillator in her heart. Correct. She had a complicated pregnancy. Kai was under tremendous amount of stress dealing with her relationship, her health challenges. Mm -hmm. So nonetheless, we'll say that. On December the 1st, 2020, I had moved back to Los Angeles and I was staying in the, in the Pico Crenshaw area. I've been going out to Venice Beach, Santa Monica Beach since I was a kid. It has helped me cope with chronic depression from gun violence, trauma in my community. So I always just felt that the beach was nourishing and just filled me up and gave me like a boost of energy beyond just the, the beautiful, you know, scenery and people and all of that. So on December the 1st, 2020, I had went out to Santa Monica as I often would when I lived in LA. I was going out there to watch the sunset. I'm addicted to sunsets. I love, absolutely love, I'm a sucker for a sunset. So I went out there, got off of the expo line, the, the, the train, I think it's expo line, got off the train and I had recorded myself talking about today's December 1st, 2020. I'm here to watch the sunset, you know, let's go. 
Today is December the 1st, 2020, and I'm having a fabulous, fabulous day. I'm out here in Southern sunny California, and I am surviving this pandemic, and I wanna show you this shot of the beautiful, beautiful sunset. It's in the background. I rushed out here to get that sunset. Um, so, come on, let's go, let's, let's go see this beautiful sunset. Um, yeah, okay. Have a nice day. And I took some photographs. The sun was setting. The sun was setting. And made my way down to Venice. As I made my way down to Venice Beach, the sun was setting. It was. It, it had gotten darker. And so with me being a beach bum, a beach junkie, Venice Beach bum junkie, I could always be found by the basketball courts. And so I made my way over there. And I was just, you know, taken back because I noticed that there was caution tape up. And so, you know, I figured out there was some kind of a, it was a crime scene investigation. I wasn't asking questions and everything. I just went and chilled off to the, by the basketball courts and was just enjoying the, 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 the air and just everything about Venice Beach. But I was still kind of surprised because all the years that I had been going to Venice Beach, I had never seen tape and like some kind of an active investigation going on and mm -hmm. I think I, I I went back home I took some pictures and they were in my cell phone for a while and that was it where was Kai at on December the 1st 2020 and what was she um, doing she went to Venice Beach um well they went out to Venice Beach her and her sister my grandson's father and my daughter's boyfriend at the time they went to go have dinner and watch the sunset and they rented some scooters and this was not could, could you clarify was this her husband or her boyfriend it was my grandson's father. Okay. But yeah. Okay. That, that's fine. I just, because I had read different things, so I was trying to clarify. <laughs> Cortland Bridges was overcome with grief as she spoke to us about her daughter, 28 year old Kai Thomas. It still doesn't seem real. It's like, I'm just waiting on Kai to call me. It's like a dream. Thomas was shot and killed on December 1st, just before 5.30 p.m. near the Venice Beach Boardwalk. The LAPD says there was some type of dispute between Thomas, her boyfriend, and three unidentified men who opened fire on them. Thomas was the only one who got hit and later died from her injuries. Investigators believe the shooting was gang-related, but Bridges wants to make this clear. My daughter was not a gang member. My daughter was a mother. My daughter was a loving and kind and caring person who helped anybody. Bridges says Thomas leaves behind an eight-year-old daughter and a now one-month-old son. The young mother from Rialto had dreams for her family. Thomas had just bought a new house and was supposed to move next week. She also recently received her broker's license in the commercial trucking industry to give her children a better life. I want justice for her kids. If nothing else, justice for her kids. I want justice for my daughter. I'm angry as hell. Bridges tells us she doesn't know the man her daughter was with. She knows of him, but has not spoken with him. Police say the suspects, who may have been wearing hoodies, ran away. Investigators are looking for witnesses and video evidence in the area for clues. They need to be held accountable for what they did. The LAPD says detectives are out actively working this case right now. Anyone with information that can help identify the suspects is asked to call West Bureau Homicide Investigators. Reporting from downtown LA, Rachel Kim, KCAL 9 News. When was your last communication with her and what was it about? With Kai? Um, she texted me that day and asked me, could I zail her um, landlord her last rent payment? because she was she had purchased a home and she was getting ready to move into them into mm -hmm. it but i was gonna be paying her rent and so i was waiting for that but i was in the store and i had sent her some pictures and i asked her what was the color scheme for her bathroom she said she didn't know long story short i sent her two pictures 
and they were scriptures and they were these plaques. And the one of the plaques I sent her, one of them said, it is well with my soul. And the other one was Isaiah 43 and two. And that one says, when you go through deep waters, I am with you. Mm -hmm. She sent it right back and said, I want that one. Mm -hmm. That was the last communication we had. It was for her color scheme. Um, it was for her bathroom because the kitchen, I guess my grandson's father, I guess had already had that figured out or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and the plaque was, it was like a little picture thing and it was gray and white or whatever. So she was going to let me do the bathroom. So, mm -hmm. and it was just, you know, a scripture and I've, I've stood on that since December 1st, 2020 at, it was between 1230 and one something that it was sent to her. I still look at it and it's tattooed on my arm. It was at, that was around 1230, 1 PM. Mm -hmm. Yes. On December 1st. December 1st. And I think that was Tuesday. I think that was, yes. I think that was, tu that was Tuesday. Yes. And the tattoo is when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Yes. Yes. How soon after she passed, did you get that tattooed on your arm? January 28th, we had a tattoo party at my parents' house. Uh, a lot of my family members got tattoos. Um, they mm -hmm. have Kai's name tattooed. Um, we have butterflies because um, Kai had four butterflies on her hand, which represented her, her sister and her son and her daughter. So, and they were red butterflies. So I have um, on my arm and I'll show you. I it's, noticed that around your wrist area. No, no, no. It, that's something different. Oh my, yeah, that's something different. This is something different. Oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. Is that Yeah, the that's something different. But this here is the tattoo. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm horrible. My camera. It's okay. Move it, move it over to the, yep. um, it was about eight of us that got tattoos that day. My, my, my parents, mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they got, they their, got them. their first tattoos. Well, my dad's no, my mom, the, the shenanigans, that lady, she must've said every cuss word in the world. And I think it's, I want to say it's on my Instagram page. I, if you go through my pictures, um, it's on my Instagram page. But yes, we had a tattoo party and um, it was a lot of us got tattoos with her name um, and one of my cousins who was like, uh, her and Kai grew up really close. And, you know, she got Kai's name with butterflies, a lot of them. So yes. Okay. In an LA Times interview, you said Kai was a mother with hopes and aspirations for her children. What were Kai's hopes and aspirations for her children? Or what she wanted, or what are her hopes for, for her aspirations for her children? She wanted her um, daughter and her son, of course, to be able to grow up and go to college. She wanted them to be able to grow up to, every parent wants their children to be able to grow up together. Mm -hmm. But to be able to grow up and just be able to be free and not have to worry about gun violence. She wanted them to be able to grow up and be entrepreneurs, be able to have their own business and own a home, you know, to grow up with in a home, to be able to have a backyard to play in and just, you know, be free from all worry, you mm -hmm. know, and grow up with their mother. And that was that was taken from them. That was. That's what she wanted is for her children to, you know, grow up together and have their mother. Family. And family was very important. You mentioned that earlier. Uh, uh, you just mentioned that she wanted her children to be free from gun violence. So growing up, had, had there been conversations before about gun violence impacting the community? Had she ever mentioned it? Had she lost friends? What was her thoughts or feelings or, you know, about gun violence? 
was Kai impacted by gun violence growing up in Pasadena or did she lose friends? How does she feel about gun violence? She just was really, you know, as far as violence in general, because she had been affected by domestic violence, not mm -hmm. gun violence, but domestic violence. And then just, you know, seeing things on, on TV as far as gun violence, just, you know, in the communities we grew up in, she grew up in Pasadena. So she had, you know, she had friends that had been affected by gun violence. You know, she knew people that whose lives were taken. Um, she did have friends that had lost their lives to gun violence. So that was something that, you know, she was concerned about. And, you know, she, she was potentially, you know, wanted to make sure that her children didn't have to worry about that. So, wow. you know, she wanted, you know, she always wanted to make sure that they grew up somewhere safe, okay. you know, and didn't have to worry about that. So that's mm -hmm. why she thought maybe moving to Victorville would have been somewhere. But as we all know, gun violence can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter where you can live in Beverly Hills. You can live anywhere. Look at what happened in Newport Beach. They're, oh, well, I'm not, oh, that's right. Y'all forgot you're in New York. New, um, Newport Beach a couple of months ago, you know, some some people were affected by it. So I oh, mean, oh, right, right. I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying gun violence, people think that it only happens in no. our communities when no. it doesn't, is what no. I'm saying. No, you know? and I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. But no, no, I know. It's, it's foolish. It's foolish to think. But anyone thinking that, is a fool because the history right. of this country that's right guns have been that's blazing right. and popping since 1619 that's right that's right and it, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight unfortunately nope. that's right it, what did they call it guns and butter that's right yep. you know it, it, you know, it so it, yeah that's right you know so it was just you know she just wanted her children to grow up and and be safe is is what I'm saying. She just you know when you know people think if if they move somewhere where it's not you know heavily as impacted you know with gangs and and different things like that. So mm -hmm. you know she just and we didn't live in the ghetto. We didn't live in in the projects. You know she didn't grow up like that. But just she wanted her children to have you know be somewhere where they had a backyard and different things like that. That's all I'm saying. And she was living in Rialto. Her home was in Rialto. Rialto. She, Rialto. Well, her home she purchased was in uh, Victorville. She had just bought a home built from the ground up. But she had lived in, she had lived in Rialto and then she had purchased a home in Victorville. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Tell us briefly about your family's background in Pasadena. So my grandmother was born and raised in Pasadena. My mother's mother and my parents were born and raised in Pasadena. So my family has been in Pasadena for years. Um, I don't know if the freeway, the old 710 freeway. So my great grandmother, my mother's mother, that freeway right there, my grandmother's house used to be on Mentone. Cut through. They, huh? Cut through. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So my they had to pay my great grandmother to relocate her. Cortland, you are the first person from Pasadena and first black person from Pasadena who's telling me that they were impacted by that. I've mm -hmm. never known anyone like like and I know I know that's history and it, wait that was, was that called redlining? No, that's not redlining. That, no, that, that was just displacement. That was just displacement. But they had to pay her and she was able to buy a house over, over there off of Ventura by Charles White Park. She had a really nice house over there. Ended up buying one. Yeah. I grew up, so I, grew, my, I, uh -huh, I grew up going to Charles White Park. My auntie lived right across from uh, Zeke, the guru, Zeke the Sheik, the guru of doo-doo. That big old comp, big old comp, the chickens would be out, smell like crap. My aunt lived right across from there. I had a cousin who lived up on Ventura, directly in the back of 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 Zeke. So it had friends on. 
I was there as a kid all the time. Okay. Tell me this. My family got there in the 1950s and they were living near Casitas and Nail Dome over there near Figueroa, go, going that oh, way. Wow. Okay. So, your family got there in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s? My, so my great grandmother, they so it was my mother's mother. It was seven girls. Their last name was King. It was seven girls. And my great grandmother, um, La Fiesta was the street where they end up moving to after they were had to move um, off of, of Mentone, the old Mentone. So it was Ventura and La Fiesta is where my grandmother ended up buying her house at my great grandmother, where they had to pay her to get a house. Yes. You don't know what year. Ooh, no. It was my grandmother was a little girl and my grandmother passed oh, my that was my great grandmother. So obviously it was either in the 30s or the 40s or the 50s, yes. somewhere around there. Yes. Okay. I, and then my great grand then on my dad's side, uh, my last name is Bridges, of course. My great grandfather him and one of my one of his brothers or his cousin, they used to own RJ's liquor store back before the other people owned it right there on Woodbury. Um, and they used to own a what do you call it? A sanitation business as well, called a dumping company as well, called Bridges and Sons. So yeah, my family's did, been did, in they, they they hauled people's trash? Yeah, they yeah, called Bridges and Sons. So what landfill did they deposit it at? Over in Eagle Rock? Yeah. You Do you know anyone? Did you know anyone named Abazine Scott? My, I can, my daddy probably did. Because he used to, they used to own a house, two houses on Fair Oaks. The reason why I say that was because I don't know any other Black men that were living in Altadena or Pasadena that were hauling people's, you know, garbage and stuff. My grandfather did. And mm -hmm. as a little boy, I would go with him on those runs and stuff. And, you know, afterwards we'd go to the landfill. He would take me to Jim's Burgers. And, and my grandpa had a big old riggedy, raggedy gray truck. And I was just in Pasadena in June, 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 July, whatever. And I was walking up Lincoln, right by that barber shop where Matt's Pharmacy used to be at. Mm -hmm. And a, a, a gray truck was blocking me looked just like my grandpa's truck. And I was just like, mm -hmm. I, you know, it was, it, and I don't think about him often or whatever, but I was like, wow, like my grandpa just pulled up in front of me and it was just the coolest memory. Uh -huh. And I sent it to my mom and she was, she was just like, you know, she was laughing and stuff because you don't see trucks like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't see trucks like that anymore. I, I wonder if they knew each other they, or, or they crossed probably... paths. They they probably did, and my great grand grandmother used to um his his wife um they um yeah we my great grandfather yeah he used to um haul stuff yep mm -hmm. well, and, and and so my my grandpa was your he was he he was your he was your complexion it's a possibility that he might have he might have he might have uh your family knew my my um grandfather. they probably did my great grandfather was a a dark dark man with some real fine fine baby hair he was i mean like baby soft hair he was dark and super tall let me ask you His this name was bridges last name theodore they called him Paul. did he like to did, did did he gamble no he didn't gamble he didn't gamble did, no did, did he ever go to that that hall like that union hall on fair oaks and orange grove no nah. he wasn't a part of that no you no nah, he loved women i'll tell you that uh-huh 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 <laughs> <laughs> he loved him some women i know that okay. i don't know how my great grandma did it because baby i wouldn't have did it this mm -hmm. sounds like a whole it sounds like a whole nother episode or interview <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. that old school love back in the day <laughs> uh, papa was a rolling stone what was your favorite part about growing up and living in pasadena or what is your most cherished memory and proudest moment in Pasadena? My most proudest moment um, being from Pasadena and I would say is when my daughter Cameron graduated from high school, as I reflect back and I mean, I, 
most people wouldn't think of that as something they would say being from Pasadena. But the reason why I would reflect on that is because Kai got to be there and see her sister graduate. And so I have to reflect on that because And this is Kai's okay. baby sister. Yes, because I would, that that would be something that we, we all was able to, that was a, college was a milestone, but it was something that was a oneness and it had something to do with the city that I'm from, my parents went to Pasadena High School and I always wanted to be a bulldog. I always. And why know, is that Cortland? Why? Cause I got, I had to go to mirror, but I got kicked out cause I was a bad kid. <laughs> See, there you go. But, <laughs> but I always wanted to be a bulldog. <laughs> So my girls were, were bulldogs. Kai ended up going away to school in Rialto. But Cameron, Cameron's a bulldog. And so she got to walk across that stage. And so I just say, hmm. because Kai got to be there and just. And what year would that have been? Not, uh, 2019. So to see my baby walk across that stage and be a bulldog, because I, I didn't get to be no bulldog. So I'm a bulldog at heart because my baby got to be a bulldog. So being a, being from Pasadena, being a bulldog mom. So. So I don't, I, I, you know, I have family that have went to PHS, my little sister, my nephew. Yes. I, I don't know nothing about, you know, being a, I, I just, I just, I graduated from beer, so. I'm, oh, you know, I don't want to talk to you. We got to stop that I interview. I don't. <laughs> no, that's it. I mean, no, cut no, it, cut it. No shade, no shade to the, to, to the bulldog. And speaking of my family, <laughs> during our two hour phone call, which was at the beginning of August. And then we had a pre-interview at the end of August. During our two hour phone call back in the beginning of August, we were just having a general conversation. And, th and at that time, I, I, you know, I knew who you were and the, about the foundation and everything. We had never had any contact prior to, to you know, this at all. I've never met you in person. You've never met me, but it is a high possibility and probability that we either cross paths glanced at each other, that I saw you around the, com the, the, the the apartment complex where my mother lives at because you guys were neighbors. And I remember my nephew, Devin, telling me that, well, you know, after everything happened with Kai, I was reading the newspapers and stuff and I realized she was from Pasadena. Some people were telling me that she was related to us. And I said, no, I would know if she was related to us. There's no relation whatsoever. And looking back at it now, I see why people were saying that. You know, she was from Pasadena, but you and your family lived next door to my mother for, for a number of years. And during our conversation that came out, I had forgot that my nephew told me that like three, three, three or, you know, some years ago, I totally, so much has happened. I, I, I just, I just, I just forgot, but I knew, you know, she was from Pasadena. During our two hour phone call, we were talking about Elliott Middle School and I mentioned my older sister, Naomi, and my brother, Milton, who's, who's, who's now deceased. You said you knew them. You, you said you went to school with them. And, 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 you know, of course I got excited. Those are my siblings, my family. What do you remember about Naomi and Milton? We went to Elliott together. We went to junior high. Oh, me and, me and Naomi were, um, we were friends. We we would um, we had. I forgot which which class we had together. I was I was kind of I was not a nice girl in school. I was I was I was I was mean. I always wanted to fight all the boys. 
And a lot of the boys will say that in in, in school. <laughs> well, but 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 I, that's the opposite. Why would you want to fight the boys versus the girls? Because usually the girls want to whoop on the girls, not the boys. I don't right? know. Right? I mean, I'm, I right? don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And they always, uh, a lot of the boys from Altadena grew up with one of my cousins who's from Altadena. And they they happened to see me on Instagram with him. And they was like, oh my God, that's your cousin. Oh my God, she was so mean in school. And you know, and it's just, but I'm I'm reformed now, you know, when I mean I'm gonna be totally transparent with you. And even in school, once you've once you've been down this path that I've been down when you've had a, a child taken. Mm -hmm things become so different and you look back and you're like, who was that person? And so I look back and I'm like, that girl was, she wasn't so nice, mm. you know? And um, it, it's, it, it's, it softened you. It softened me a lot. Mm. But I mean, I, I've always had a good heart. Like I would help anybody do anything for anybody, mm -hmm. but maybe it was because I was always bigger than everybody. I mean, I developed quicker and I was always taller than everybody else. So, you mm. know, a lot of times you have to, that's your defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I, that was just, you know, something that I had to, you know, to protect myself, mm -hmm. you know, but. I always had a good heart, but no, your sister, um, you know, I went to school with her. I, re I remember, I remember her and your brother, you know, they were, they were nice kids. They were, mm -hmm. you know, you so kind of, you, you, you remind me of Naomi a little bit. You, you, you remind me of her. You kind you kind of remind me of her. And that would have been in the eighties. That would have been in the eighties. That would have been in the late eighties. Mm -hmm. Would have been in the late eighties. It wouldn't have been in the, the early nineties because yeah, it wouldn't have been. It, yeah, would have been in the eighties, right? Yeah. yeah, that was in the eighties. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that would have been in the eighties. And so, when did you become neighbors with my mother in Pasadena? Do you remember what year? I moved. Let me see. I had Cameron was born in. 2001 so maybe she moved there she got there in 2002 2002 so maybe uh when she was no, there, was there a little after that way you, after that when you moved when you moved there she was already there they were there oh yeah they they were there way way after that so um didn't you say 2009 or seven or eight? Oh, there you go. So thank you. My memory, Lord. It's so okay. Okay. Um, maybe like 2000, maybe 2007, between 2006, 2006, because I know I think I moved, maybe 2007, somewhere in there. So 2006, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm an unofficial historian, so. Okay. So yes, a lot of people don't appreciate that, but it is what it is. No, somebody, it's good. Somebody's got to keep uh, records, right? <laughs> well, that's a good thing. No, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just hope no one's keeping records on me. Um, we also talked about my mother, and what do you remember most about my mother? I need to say it. <laughs> um, Miss Brenda, um, she, she didn't, she didn't speak to anybody. She just go to her car, mm -hmm. have her keys ready. <laughs> yep. yep, she go. I mean, she, she didn't pass go. She go. She gone, she, gone. Yes, mm -hmm. but I will tell you what. Her hair, baby, let me tell you, that hair, she kept that hair on point and she couldn't yeah. wear the hell out of that hair. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. She, her, but, short, her short, her short, short, short hair. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but she, she, um, yeah, mm -hmm. she, she wouldn't crack a smile. Yeah. I, I, difficult is not even the word to describe her. But you know, what is not the word? <laughs> but you know what I, I would, what I will say is, is, mm -hmm. you know, you never know somebody's story, and so what I've learned is, you can't judge a person um, by that, right? And it, it, it may be a reason why mm -hmm. she's like that, and so I, I've again, going through everything that I've been through, I, I've learned now, not to to judge because under all of that she may have a heart of gold and um you know or for whatever reason you know she it may be some things that she's dealing with and she just doesn't want to you know let that wall down and, and i'm okay with that right so but right. yeah you said she was mean very now much so. very huh? much so and Very I have to so. I have to rewind because you confessed that you were mean. Well, no, you, you said you were you were a mean girl when you were younger, though. So, so I just find that so funny that you said she was mean. That she's mean, but then you said that you were mean. <laughs> but see, I got myself together. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it and it took. <sighs> look, look, I gotta say this: mean recognize me. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, when we were talking, I just thought that was really interesting, you know, how, 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 I, I don't think anyone has ever really described my mother that way other than me <laughs> and my siblings, you know, so, so for someone from the community and who was a neighbor, it was just like, oh, like she knows my mom. And I was, I was, I was like, I wasn't taken back, but I was like, oh, she, she knows my mom. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, and I'll just leave it at that. You know, but un unfortunately, people, uh, things, people are impacted by things. And in a perfect world, people would be nicer and kinder and sweeter and not mean. So they say some people get the mean gene, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, you were accurate. You were, you were accurate. <laughs> what do you remember about my younger sister, Courtney, and my nephew, Devin? Devin was always, I would always see him with a skateboard leaving, leaving to go, getting a truck, uh, getting a truck. Always very, very respectable, like mm -hmm. really, He's respectful. really respectable, like, you know. Courtney, we, same thing, really respectable. I've never, hmm. never seen them. Pearl. Yeah, I'm, I've never seen them being disrespectful or anything. They would all, they would speak when they, you know, when I would see them going out for school or whatever. Courtney used to um, date one of my friend's sons. And so that's why I remember but she was, you know, always so, so nice. Like I said, when I would see them, they were really respectful. You know, I never seen them, you know, even like a perfect example, like kids that are sheltered, because I, like I said, I know how, you know, your mom was. So, you know, when kids are away from home and when they, they're in a different environment, how they just run loose. They, I never seen, you know, I never seen them like that. I mean, of course, you know, Devin, he would be a, a little, you know, a, a little more shy, quiet he, at home, but at school, you know, he was, he was fine, but he wouldn't be one of those kids where you'd be like, oh, I could tell the difference when, you know, he's not at home, but I couldn't tell that, you know, he was still very respectful and everything, <laughs> you know? So yeah, great kids, great kids. Nothing, I couldn't, I couldn't say anything bad about them. Mm -hmm. You know, very amazing, you know, great kids. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, you know, one thing. I, I think I've seen them a couple of times and try to offer them a ride, you know, and I said to myself, well, maybe Miss Brenda was like, you better not take a ride from nobody. 
victim knocking on your door. Uh, uh, Cortland, uh, it's a problem. <laughs> then like, ma'am, you might want to go back down to your door. <laughs> you end up in that pool. Uh, what's that word called? How often would you see them? Would you see them weekly, monthly? You would just... No, I would see them because, I mean, she had to take them to school every day. Oh, yeah. I would she see them. Yeah, and I would she see probably them. was going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I would see her going, going to work. Oh, wow. You know, um, but so yeah, I, no, I would see them. Devin wrote skateboards, Courtney dated Brandon, Courtland's friend. But Kai, what did Kai say about them? That they acted differently at school than at home? Yes, because I mean, when she would see them at school, but not in a bad way. No, 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 no. Just, just, yeah. Yeah, they would be different at at school than, than at home. Because I though. didn't know she went with Brandon until Kai told me. Oh, wow. And then I'm like, and then my friend, because we... I went, my friend's son, Brandon, we all went to the same church. So his mom, okay. Cheryl, so that's in there. Cheryl was like, you know, had told, had told me. So did my mama like, know that, did huh? my mama, did my mama know that uh, Brandon and Courtney were dating? I don't know. I don't uh, know. This is, this is making the world much more smaller. And I'm really enjoying hearing stories about our community. I, I, I really am. This is this, I, I, I'm, I really am. Yeah, this is. Wow, a lot. This, this is gonna fill in so many gaps for a lot of people. Going back to what you said about your your, your uh, grandfather being the tall in the trash, grandfather, right? Yep, my great grandfather. The the mentone, the how the mentone, the, the the the. That the was well. That was my mother's. My that was my great grandmother on my mom's side. So my great grandmother, Jewel King. Jewel King. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is this is great. So now we're gonna fast, we're, we're done with the family history and all of that community. Having worked for many years in one of the bigger trauma centers, I had way too much experience with gun violence. To see the tragedy being part of trying to keep people alive after mass shootings, but more commonly wrapping five teenage boys up on Mother's Day from mass shootings on the street here. I think that you never get over those cases. You don't get over a four-year-old who found a gun in the house that didn't have a gun lock and they've shot themselves. Violence is a health care emergency. I work to end gun violence because my younger brother was killed 29 years ago. And more recently, my two nephews, brothers, they were killed during a pandemic. That is why I work to end gun violence. I work to end gun violence because all too often here in Los Angeles, we are too familiar with the pain and the trauma associated with gun violence. I work to end gun violence because I hope that one day my children can live in a community where they don't have to worry about victimization. I work to end gun violence to create a safe space for community members and the youth to cohabitate and to hash out any problems that they might have without resulting in violence. Mi nombre es María Sánchez y yo trabajo para prevenir la violencia con arma, ya que actualmente el sistema so no puede prevenir la violencia. I work to end gun violence because we need to disarm hate. I work to end gun violence because I am a survivor of gun violence. I also work to end gun violence to prevent 
the harm that has been done in our community with guns. I also create safe spaces for our loved ones who have lost loved ones to gun violence. I work to end gun violence because in 2010, it hit close to home. Uh, my younger brother was murdered. In 2016, it hit close to home again with my second younger brother being murdered. I work to end gun violence because I have three sons, a large family, many community members and friends that I care about, creating safe spaces and environments for us to grow and heal and just be at peace is important, so that's why I work to end gun violence. I work to end gun violence because I am a survivor of gun violence, and I work in this community because it's needed for the kids. I work to end gun violence because I believe that we're all entitled to a healthy, safe, and thriving community. I work to end gun violence because as a mother, I believe that my children and all children should be and are entitled to a healthy childhood without the fear of hurt, harm, and abuse. I work to end gun violence because as a domestic violence advocate, 50% of women who are murdered by their intimate partner are killed when there is an involvement of a firearm. And I believe that ending gun violence is 100% preventable. Jerusalem. <laughs>